Well, good morning, boys and girls. Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. So, you know, a lot of my videos, as you guys are aware, either come from suggestions or things you guys ask to see, uh, or come from things that I observe that I think are interesting. And this is a little bit of a combination of both. So, if you remember when we did the Puma, uh, Puma, when we did the, uh, yeah, the Puma STS review with Mark. Mark's one of the owners of Rambo Outdoors down in Orange. And, um, he made a comment that he was running a 300 on that boat to get better fuel economy. And I still have not had any way yet, I'd love to, to see if that is correct or not. Not that I don't believe Mark, but I'd like to see it from my own eyes. Run a, a boat, I don't care what boat, with a 250 and a 300, and just see one which one gets better fuel economy. But since I, it, it made me think about mine, especially when gas got close to five bucks a gallon this summer. Now, gas is back around three bucks a gallon right now. Still expensive. And by the way, I don't know if you've ever done the math on this or not. And if, if you haven't, and if your wife can hear me right now, uh, turn the sound down. Because uh, pretty much all of these boats at three bucks a gallon, four strokes, not two strokes, but those where you're not burning oil, are about a dollar a mile. That's about what they cost to run around on the lake. So it gets real expensive real quick. So what I wanted to see was, could I impact my fuel economy with a different propeller? And fortunately, I had, I've got several props uh, and I had specifically, so, so what I discovered in all the prop testing on my boat was the best prop on this boat when the weather is hot is a 20, three pitch 23 pitch three blade mercury fury prop and the best thing to run in the winter time is a 23 pitch i hope i got that right summer's 24 winter's 33 33 pitch three blade fury so i just swapped and put my three blade back on here uh but what i'm gonna do is i got those two props and then Dickie Newberry had a 25.5 pitch four blade Bravo one. So I've got two three blades and a four blade. And what I wanna do is run each of those props and see which one of them will give me the best fuel economy at multiple ranges. Now, this is something, so by the way, I've already run one of these props. So I've got a little bit of knowledge under my belt. And it's something I had never considered before. And, and that is this, in my, and actually, so you guys probably know, I have, my wife says I'm the only redneck in the world that has two vehicles and they're both pickup trucks. So I have a, a six cylinder, that little, uh, that little uh, supercharged F-150 pickup truck that I drive around town. And then on my big road trips, I have an 06, that LMZ motor, Chevy, three quarter ton, four wheel drive, extended cab pickup truck. It's a beast, it's nick nickname as you guys know is Johnny Cash. And what I know from driving both of those trucks with and without a boat behind me is their best fuel economy is at slower speeds. You get better fuel economy at 40 than you do 50, 50 than you do 60, 60 than you set do 70, and way better at 70 than you do 80. And I, I believe I know the reason for that is simply wind resistance, right? The faster you go, the more wind, wind resistance, uh, and and therefore the more the harder the engine has to work to keep you at that speed. And if you've never ex checked this out, by the way, another factor that will absolutely crush your fuel economy in a pickup truck is rain and wet roads. That just adds a whole different level level of friction. So, what I thought in a bass boat was you'd get best fuel economy at 30 or 40 miles an hour. And, and I can promise you right now, that is not the case. Although you're burning lower fuel per hour, which you'll see, you are actually going slower. So even if you're only burning 12 gallons an hour at 30 miles an hour, you're getting less than three miles to the gallon because you're only getting 30 miles per hour. So this has been eye-opening to me but now that I know that, I'm running these props at, I started to do them at 30, but that doesn't make sense. So I'm running them at 40, 50, and 60 miles an hour. Uh, Rowlett, please come down here and check on this. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, well, it's a good looking vehicle. Uh, 40, 50, and 60 miles an hour, just to see 
what's going to be the best prop at each speed, and also to try to find the sweet spot on the props. So like I said, I've already run one of them. We're going to go run the 23 blade, uh, tw 23 pitch, three blade Fury right now. And then I'll come back at the end and we'll talk about, well, actually, I won't know when we close this. You know, we'll probably do the close at the house. That would make more sense. So we'll come back at the close and we'll uh, we'll look and see which one of them seems to make better sense to run when you're looking for fuel to come. Here we go, guys. Guys, I'll talk more about this on one of the later props, but this is the sweet spot on this prop. There's there's a there's a spot where the boat's come really up out of the water good, and you can see the RPMs drop, the speed's good, and the mile per hour picks up significantly. So uh, that's the sweet spot on this three blade 23 pitch. Got a 24 pitch three blade fury. Three blade fury. Let's see what we get.
Guys, first I got to say thanks to the guys at Jones Trolling Motor for hooking up my NEMA into my Garmin units. You can do this in all the units now, Lawrence, Garmin, and Humminbird. And what I saw, and I saw it with all three props I ran, this was the most dramatic. So that's the footage I'm going to show you, is there is a sweet spot where you get enough lift. You know, it's so different than your truck. With your truck driving slow, you get better gas mileage. But with a boat, you got to get the boat up out of the water. And watch what happens. So we're burning a lot of fuel here. We've been running 17 gallons per hour at 61 miles an hour. And all of a sudden, we're going to get just the perfect amount of lift. And watch what happens. It's dramatic. Right there, it drops to 13.5 gallons per hour. We're burning at 61 and a half miles an hour. And note, I did not monkey with the trim at all. It just got the perfect amount of lift. And every prop I ran did this which gives you the most fuel economy in the boat and it's something it's worth having your NEMA hooked up I even got a little bit better but I dropped some speed there so that's just something to note if you're out making long runs and really wanting to figure out what your best fuel economy is get your NEMA cables hooked up and you guys not surprisingly when you really wind it up uh, and by the way it's pretty hard to hold a camera at 73 miles an hour but uh, when you wind it up, you start burning gas again. So uh, all through this range here, I ran multiple calculations, you know, run, running just north of 72, 72.5, 72.6, burning uh, 23 gallons of fuel. And by the way, that's pretty quick. The other prop, the 24 pitch prop is a little bit faster. It's with me in it by myself, a, a 76, 77 mile an hour prop, even in this warm weather. But uh, you see there, I'm burning uh, just barely, uh, Barely getting three miles for the gallon running wide open with that uh, with that Bravo on there. All right, you guys know I love tables. So this is a summary of all that data. So uh, all three props, 30, 40, 50, 60 roughly on each one. And then sweet spot, what I saw. And then wide open throttle on two of the three. I, the 24 pitch three blade is the fastest prop, interestingly. But I was on Granberry, and you literally could not get a half a mile of lake where there wasn't a wake boat and there wasn't a three foot wake coming up at you. So, did not get to run it. But it's like I said in the video earlier, it's a, a mid high 70 prop. It is interestingly the fastest prop in the current weather. So, the weather is mid 80s. Uh, once the weather cools off a little more, it'll get even faster. Uh, but the, the 23 pitch, you're going to see it sort of gets right up against the rev limiter and you just can't get any more than about 72, about 74 miles an hour out of that prop. So interesting things to note here to me. As we talked about, uh, there's decent mileage going really slow, going 30 miles an hour up there. You're around four miles to the gallon. But then throughout the rest of the range, it starts dropping off and it, it's not real dramatic until you compare it against finding the sweet spot. And I guess as looking at this, the, the thing that really surprised me was the fastest prop, the 24 pitch prop is, is by quite a bit, by more than 10% or right, I guess about 10%, not the most uh, fuel efficient prop to be running on my boat right now. It's the three blade Fury 23 pitch. Uh, and you can see I can get, 4.69 miles per gallon. Now, another thing that is a complete head scratcher to me is how is RPMs not related to, uh, to miles per gallon? I guess it has something to do with how that motor's producing the energy, but you know, you're running uh, lower, uh, lower RPMs on the 24 pitch at 5,100, but getting worse with gas mileage when you're running at 5450 on the three blade again or the 23 pitch i don't understand it i just captured the data if somebody can explain it jump right in in the commentary and please do um but you can kind of see there it looks to me like if i'm if i've got a, and there's really two reasons to do this number one if you're going to make a really long run and you're trying to conserve fuel you know i remember growing up we fished around the arkansas river a lot and we would literally go from Little Rock to Pine Bluff. And if you're making that run or you're over in Louisiana or you're on the Great Lakes, you really need to conserve fuel. And to do that, you need to find that sweet spot. That in, in all three of these props, that sweet spot was 61, 62 miles an hour where you're getting the perfect amount of lift, but you're not over accelerating. You're not getting the RPMs too high. And you can see 
on two of those, you got the RPMs, you know, under 50, or actually all three under 5,500 RPMs and running in the mid 60s. And by the way, I should point out that three blade 23 pitch fury is in crappy shape. I got to believe if I had a new 23 pitch, which I do, unfortunately it's in Zavala, those numbers get better because there's a significant amount of prop slip in that prop right now because of the shape of the prop from me actually running across a gravel bar at Texoma last year. So uh, that I think that prop would probably even look better. And when I get back to Rayburn this fall, we'll test it. Uh, and I bet you we're going to get really close to five miles to, to the gallon uh, out of that prop. So what difference does this really make? Well, as I said, there's two reasons to do this. Either to conserve fuel so you can get home from where you're going, or because you just don't want to be out of pocket a whole bunch of money, at, you know, even at three bucks a gallon. If it goes back to five bucks a gallon, it's really going to get expensive. So again, you know me, I love charts, so I created one more chart for us to look at. All right, I can't help myself. I majored in finance at the University of Arkansas, so I love me some graphs and some charts. I stuck this last one in here. So not unusual on a day on Rayburn to run 50 miles. It's just under 20 miles from Umphreys one way to the bridge and of course if you go on up from there you know it, not unusual to run 50 and, and certainly 70 and 80 on tournament dates if you're going out of Umphreys is not unusual either so I just said what if I ran 50 miles in a day and ran different speeds what would my time running around cost me if you will in my day and what would my fuel cost be and I did everything here at three bucks a gallon at 40 miles an hour, I'd spend about 75 minutes running that 50 miles. I'd burn about 12 and a half gallons of fuel, 38, 37, 38 dollars worth of fuel I'd burn up. At 50 miles an hour, <clears throat> speed up a little bit. I don't. I cover the ground faster. It takes me an hour to run 50 miles at 50 miles an hour. I've earned 13.8 mile, 13.8 uh, gallons, about 41 dollars of fuel. Interestingly, I get a little better. Uh, it's a little more economical to run wide open to get the boat completely out of the water at 74 miles an hour than it is at 60 miles an hour. Roughly the same cost. But again, another reason we talked about here to know your numbers, and the only way to know your numbers is to either have a smart gauge for Mercury or to have uh, this hooked up to your NEMA, uh, is you know that sweet spot, 62.4 miles an hour on that particular beat-up prop. I can, I'll only burn 10.66 gallons. Frankly, I'm only losing seven minutes on a 50 mile day uh, from running wide open throttle. And I'm gonna save basically, what is that? About uh, doing the numbers in my head, about 30 or 40% on your fuel cost, whether it's two bucks a gallon or five bucks a gallon. So it's just interesting to me. It's something I've been interested in since Mark made that comment about running the 300 on his boat. And uh, those are the numbers. So, so I'll leave you with a couple of thoughts here. You know, the difference between running 60 and 62.4, again, probably speaks a lot to getting your NEMA hooked up so you can find the sweet spot on your boat. But that's a pretty significant saving. $18, you know, let's just call it a $20 bill on 50 miles. And if if you run, you know, 100, 150 miles over a weekend, you're going to save yourself, you know, 60 bucks in fuel. And it, it also clues me into something that I carry too much fuel around. So my boat will hold 32 gallons a side. Let's just call it 30 gallons a side if I don't completely overfill it. And uh, there are not many places. I mean, I could run three hours at 62 miles an hour. I could run 100 and 80 miles, if you will, on 30 gallons on one tank of fuel. They're just, it just does not make sense if you're running it in its most economical speed to put that much fuel. All you're doing, quite frankly, is hurting your own fuel economy because you're carrying more weight around. So this was just me being a total geek. And I thought about this back when it was five bucks a gallon. But again, I still think it makes a difference. On, even at three bucks a gallon, you know, here's a way to spend, say, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 bucks over a weekend. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And, you know, I don't say it enough, but there's a handful of companies that really support me and my channel and my family to help me be able to put content out like this. So if you have electronics needs, please reach out to the folks at Jones Trollamoner in Texarkana. Six Cents is great to us. 
as in Waterland Optics. So if you're going to buy some Six Sense products, please use the code KEN10 so they know that you know you heard about them through me and Waterland KEN15. The KEN10 gets you 10% discount on Six Sense. KEN15 gets you 15% discount on Waterland Optics. Tackle Warehouse is a big supporter when you use the link below. Uh, they know you come from me and they support our channel. You know, I don't talk about them much, but the folks with Basscat, it's really been a great family to be a part of for the last year and a half. I really enjoy working Rick, with Rick and the team up in Arkansas. Uh, Mercury has been a spectacular supporter of mine for the last couple of years since my channel's kind of blown up. So thanks to them and, and thanks to their uh, technical guys who have helped me with a whole bunch of stuff over the years, Mercury and Mercury Racing both. And then lastly, Seagar. Seagar Line has really come on in a big way with us for the last year and has been great to us too. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, you know what? If you're at Ray Hubbard and you're about to uh, back it in the water or pull it out of the water, you might want to be cautious because of this. The city of Rowlett might frown on you setting up a blind right here. I mean, good gosh.